Well, hello, Guru Church. I am uh, so glad that you've joined us uh, on this uh, first session video of our new member seminar. Uh, for many of you, you have been part of our church for probably three to six months, and you know pretty much what we're about. But the purpose of this seminar is to go a little bit deeper uh, so that we can grow together in the partnership uh, for the mission of Christ. And so the way we're going to divide up uh, these sessions is two of the sessions are going to be video based, or you can just click on them and listen to them while you're driving. And then two sessions are going to be in person. And some of the elders are going to help with that. And so before even I ever begin, let me just pray and ask the Lord to speak to you, to continue to clarify your uh, place here in our church and for the cause of Christ. So let me, let me lift us up in prayer as we begin. Father, thank you for bringing us together. I pray as we craft these videos that uh, it may be you speaking and you encouraging your church to connect to one another, to serve your purposes. And Father, I pray for the questions that people may have, Lord, that you may answer them um, and that we may talk about them together and that we may come ultimately together to advance your kingdom. Bless us, Lord, as we um, just grow together in this season of our lives. Thank you for these precious saints who want to grow and want to connect to a local church. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me briefly give you the uh, setup of this seminar. There's uh, going to be four sessions. Uh, the Gospel of Jesus, which we'll cover in this video. There will be our beliefs, which might be important to you to know what Garwood Church believes in its theology. That's going to be session two. Session three and four, we're going to look at together on um, in our meeting in person. Um, and so that's that's how these uh, sessions are set up. Now, I do ask you that you write some notes down, especially for in the context, uh, in the session of our beliefs. Maybe there's questions you have, you want to go deeper. We can answer those questions and talk about them together and pray together through them. But yeah, so, so just there's two sessions we're going to do. We're going to do the Gospel of Jesus now, and then we're going to do the session, Our Beliefs, next. All right, so let's begin um, our time together with the Gospel. Okay, with the Gospel. And this is page four in your guide. And if you read it, um, you know, it'll kind of walk you through what the Gospel is. But I want to begin first with a description um, of the Gospel to set us off, and I'll just read it. Um, the gospel is the good news about what God has done through Jesus Christ to save sinners and give them new life. The gospel is the message that disciples preach. It is the message that disciples must believe. It is the message that saves disciples and the message in which disciples stand. This gospel saves us and gives us hope until Jesus returns. And perhaps you have heard the good news of what Christ has done for you and maybe you're sitting here and you want to skip this part because you know what the gospel entails. Well, this is critical because the gospel is what brings us together. The reason we gather on a Sunday morning, it's because there's a uniting factor to what we believe. And at the center of that is the gospel. And so our church could be called a gospel-centered church, could be called a Christ-centered church, because that is the core of who we are. We want our sermons to preach Christ at the end of our sermons. We want our songs to magnify the sacrifice that Christ has done in our hearts. And we want believers to be encouraged daily for what he has done for them. And for the unbeliever to feel that there is uh, hope for them in the midst of a world that is secluding them in the margins and that is pushing away the lost. So that's ultimately what's drives us the gospel and so this is what we begin here and so i ask you as we go briefly through the four elements of the gospel to consider your own uh, reception of it maybe it is something that you know in your mind but it's not something that is rooted in your heart maybe you grew up with the gospel and now you just want to come to church and fulfill the check or check off the boxes of religion but the gospel is, is not that the gospel has to do with unique elements that go to the center of our heart. And so I want to go through them, and we're going to call them the four elements of the gospel. These are brief, but these elements, I think, will help you navigate what the gospel is in full depth. And so the way we begin 
the gospel, to explain the gospel, to go deeper in the gospel is the nature of God. Okay, the gospel begins first and foremost with God. And, and I have a slide here. God has created us to love and glorify, and glorify him. He is love and holy in his character. Now, Genesis 1, 26 and 27 uh, says the following. Uh, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish uh, of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God is the creator. He's the holy one of the universe. And he created us so that we may be like him, so that we may be perfect. All right, First Peter 1 says, You shall be holy, for I am holy. The ultimate end of humanity is to be like God, and he is holy and perfect, and his decisions are without error. And so when God, when God made Adam and Eve, he made them in perfection and full glory, which is why they were able uh, to be clothed by the glory of God and walk without shame. So that is the ultimate end for which God has created you and me. This is where the gospel begins. We were created in the image of God. We were loved by God. We were holy with God. So as you think about the gospel, we don't just start with uh, the good news of Jesus, but we go all the way back to Genesis, to the very opening pages of how you were made and how and why you were created for the glory of God. Now, that's a beautiful picture. However, we know what happened. And the second element of the gospel has to do with human nature, has to do with the human heart, has to do with who we are. And so here... Another slide here. Humans are sinful, having rebelled against God. God's holiness demands his just wrath towards sinners. Now, now what this simply means is that there is a chasm between God's holiness. There is a shortfall between who God is and his holiness perfection. And when Adam and Eve decided to disobey and rebel against God, that a chasm was created, the unity of holiness, the fact that they were one with God was separated. And now there was a, uh, you know, a, a, a chasm between both. And, and this is the, the problem with the human heart. Humans are sinful. We rebel. We create walls against God. And Romans 6.23 says this, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The reason you and I, have an ultimate end, the reason we have a limit to our life, the reason why we go into downward spirals in our lives, it's because we go further and further from the presence of God. And ultimately, Romans 6.23 says the end game of this is death. And when Adam and Eve sinned against God, not only were they kicked out of um, Eden, and there were two cherubim standing at the front gate, not allowing them to come back inside. Not only did that happen, but even spiritually, they were dead. They were dead to God and they were dead to themselves and ultimately dead to each other and humanity. So sin really is the cause of all the evils that we see. And the Bible is clear that all of us, every person, all of us fall short of the glory of God. Okay, and so that's another element. So if you talk about what is we talk about how do we understand the gospel, it begins with God and his holiness. Then we move into man and his sin. But God did not leave us this way. In fact, from very from the very beginning, from the very beginning that Adam and Eve sinned, God displayed his grace. And ultimately, through stories like the stories of Moses and the stories in the Old Testament all the way through David, all the way through the New Testament, you see God showing us his grace, displaying his willingness to be compassionate to humans who are sinful, to the cre creation that rebelled against God, and ultimately pointing us to the one who would save us. And so the third element of the gospel has to do with Jesus. Jesus is God in the human flesh. God sent Jesus to save sinners. And now here's the way he did it. 
representing Adam. Romans chapter 5 tells us this, that Jesus came as a second Adam, living a sinless life, being tempted the same way Adam was tempted, but yet being victorious over Satan. And ultimately, he was victorious to the point of death. He died on the cross. Heaven questioned what was happening. Uh, hell was rejoicing that Jesus had died. Yet that this death brought, uh, brought both judgment and mercy. It brought, it brought the judgment of God, the holiness of God, the judgment that we all deserve upon Christ. And it also brought the mercy that you and I did not deserve through Christ. And so 1 Peter 3.18 says this, For Christ suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he may bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Christ suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. Think about that. Jesus was righteous. Jesus was holy, yet he took on our imperfections to bring us closer to the holiness of God, to bring us near. And in fact, Ephesians 1 tells us that we're not united with God. We're one with Christ and with God. There is no separation. There is nothing that could separate us. And so there is one last aspect of the gospel that I think helps us, and it's our response. The proper response to receive the gospel um, for the forgiveness of sins is repentance from sin towards God and faith in Christ alone as our Savior. And simply what this means is we have two choices. Either we reject the offer of salvation or we receive the offer of salvation. We open our hearts and humble ourselves before our great guilt or we um, you know, reject all that He's given to us, the blessings of eternal life. The fact that we can pray to him, the fact that he listens to us, that he is our father, that God is our father, all those benefits that we have, we can either reject those or receive them. Mark, um, John chapter 3, verse 36 says this, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. So true repentance and faith continue as Jesus lives inside of us to help us live change and fruitful lives. One theologian, Tim Keller, says that the gospel is not the ABCs, but the A through Z. We never move away from the gospel. We always come back to it and remind ourselves of what Jesus has done so that we can grow and give fruit in our lives. The gospel, the Bible, is ultimately about Christ. He tells us who he, is, who he is, who God is, and who we are, what He has done. He has died and rose again to save us, and how we can know Him through repentance and faith. And so uh, this is really what we are all about at Garwood Church. We begin with the gospel, and we go around, and we go bring you back to the gospel. We believe that even the way we view counseling, the way we view marital healing, the way we view the raising of our children is centered around showing these four aspects. Who is God? Who is man? What did Jesus do? And how do we respond? And so as you become a member of our church, this is the very foundational principle that we all come together and affirm. We love Jesus and we believe in the gospel. And so if you're not a Christian, if you have not made this uh, confession in your own heart, Roman, uh, Romans chapter 10 says, confess the Lord in your heart, even with your lips, and you will be saved. I ask you to take a moment now and pray with me. So let me pray with you as we consider the great mercy of Jesus in our lives. Father, pray for those listening, for those who are becoming members of our church and have yet to consider the holiness of God. Consider their sinfulness. Consider what Christ has done. Consider their response to the great mercy of Christ. Perhaps there's callousness. Perhaps there is rejection. Perhaps there's bad memories about how they grew up. They don't want to walk this walk with you. Father, turn them from their sin. Father, let us run to you, even myself. Run to you to the gospel. And to remember that it is not by my works that I'm saved, but by the work and mercy of Jesus Christ. Father, speak to our new members and prospective new members, God. 
that um, they may receive you as Savior and that they may truly become Christians and followers of Jesus. And they may preach this message to all those around them and to the ends of the earth. Speak, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that concludes session one. I pray it has blessed you. But again, this will be part of our confession um, together in an affirmation. Uh, we are a church that is Christ-centered, gospel-centered, and focused on the gospel. And if you have questions, if you uh, want to grow more in, in, in believing in Jesus, uh, we, I'm here. The elders are here to answer any questions. I hope this has blessed you. And stay tuned for session two, which is our beliefs. Blessings.